with this, what, where do you guys start to, to try to slow them down? Uh, really just in transition, though, they're trying to, can you hear me? It's in transition, trying to slow them down and really have to box them out because they're really good on the, on the glass, pretty much, main thing. Uh, second that, I think we just have to become aggressive. Um, they're a good team, and we have to play smart and play our ball and within our system, and it could be a good game. Uh, I'm assuming this would be your guys' first NCAA tournament game? This is my first. This is my first also. Okay. Uh, just your expectations. What are you expecting? I think there will be a sellout crowd here tomorrow. Uh, just, you know, how do you get yourself mentally ready to, to step on this stage? Well, LSU being LSU, you know, they're going to have a great crowd. Um, we kind of expected that. We know the gym is going to be loud. We know that there's going to be fans not on our side. Um, and so it, it's playing together and, and getting our mindset in the framework of this is our team. We came here to win a game, and and we just have to play together. Good. No. Destiny, let me ask you, because you're the all-time leader in games played at Rice, doesn't mean you're old by any sense. you got to kind of roll your eyes a little bit like that. But what that means for the experience to have developed with the program the way you have, you change conferences, and then you go on this magical run through the tournament to get here. From somebody who's on her way out after your career here, an outstanding career, what, is it, what has it been like for you personally? It's been a, a journey. I've played in many arenas, all over the place. It's like my biggest, the biggest stage I've been on, but I'm ready for it. I mean, I had experience over the years, playing under two different coaching staffs, coaching styles, but I think it should be really fun. Malia, I think I saw a quote from you that you said at the tournament that on paper you were a 10th seed, but you y'all didn't feel like you were a 10th seed. Mm -hmm. What changed from the end of February, early March, when you had a five-game losing streak, to then finish on a four-game win streak, sweep through the tournament to get to this point? What 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 did you all do differently that turned things around like that? Like I said before, um, there's non-conference, there's conference, and then there's postseason. Each one in itself is its its own its own game. You you can't look at the past. You can't look too far ahead. And I think once conference ended, we had to put whatever happened with that behind us. And we knew if we wanted to come in and win, we had to come in knowing and believing that we had every ability to do what we needed to do to get that done. And certainly did. Congratulations Absolutely. to her. Destiny, you mentioned how going through a coaching change. I know Lindsay was the, the fastest to get to 50 at, at Rice. What's it been like with that transition and playing under this new system for you? I really enjoy playing under Coach Lindsay Edmonds. I mean, she let me run the point guard and everything and just having confidence in not only me, everybody else. Malia, can you take us through Selection Sunday this past week when when you were watching the brackets, knowing that you had the automatic bid, so you knew you were going. The right. anticipation of the anticipation of when you would see your name, and then when right. you did see your name, what it's been like over the last week, getting ready to come to Baton Rouge. Well, over, over the previous couple of days, you know, you're looking at all the predictions, who you're going to play. We we saw UCLA, we saw UConn, um, and so the actual day of, we thought we were going to be a 15 seed. So you know, we're we're looking at the 15s, and so it was completely unexpected. We saw LSU, and it's all like. Oh, you know, that could happen. And lo and behold, <laughs> there goes Rise 14 seed playing LSU. Um, and all of our reactions were genuine and exciting. And it, it was definitely nerves everywhere, you know, do what we, we came to do. And we're here and we, we, right. we set out for that. You're here and you're ready to go for tomorrow. Any other questions while we're in here? Look, it's a pleasure meeting you both. Again, congratulations on the run. Congratulations on your first tournament, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. We appreciate you. your time. Thank you, Destiny and Malia. We'll be back here at 4.05 with Coach. Rice's practice will start at 4.30, and we'll be back here in about 10 minutes or so, and Coach will join us.
Welcome back to Baton Rouge, where we wrap up our press conferences here on this Thursday. Pleased to be joined by head coach Lindsey Edmonds of Rice. Once again, Rice entering the tournament here at 19 and 14, making the school's fourth NCAA tournament appearance and the first since 2019. Also for Coach Edmonds, for what it's worth, 56 wins at Rice. She's the fastest to 50 wins in program history. Congratulations on that. Welcome to Baton Rouge. Thank you. And congratulations on your season. Uh, before we open up the floor for questions, I always like to give you the opportunity, if you'd like to make an opening statement or just talk about the journey for getting here, the microphone is yours. Yeah, uh, exciting times. Uh, really, really proud of our team um, and our accomplishments. I think, uh, you know, our February skid that we went on, no coach wants to go on that, um, but uh, it allowed us to refocus. It allowed us to shift our mindset. It allowed us to have a hunger in our eyes when we went into conference tournament and it was everything that we needed. So I kept saying early on that, you know, some of these adversities we're going through are gonna bring us March blessings and, and man, they brought us a big one. So this is awesome. We're excited about it, excited about the opportunity. Uh, I know this is something that our young ladies are going to remember for the rest of their lives. So excited to be here. Coach, thank you very much. We'll open up the floor for questions for Coach. Please raise your hand, introduce yourself, your affiliation, uh, since we are streaming this as well. And with that, we'll open up for our Coach questions. Hey, uh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ here in Baton Rouge. Just curious your thoughts on LSU. The, obviously, they're so widely circulated, right? But as far as a team goes, what do you see in them? Yeah, uh, they're a tremendous team with a lot of talent. Uh, very, um, very diverse in their scoring, right? Like five players averaging more than 12 points. So this very spread out. Obviously, Angel scores a lot and rebounds a lot, but everybody really chips in in the scoring uh, category. So um, there's not um, a player, you know, there's a lot of times in our scouting reports that we can say, hey, we're going to help off of this person to go defend this person. Uh, that's not something that we can do this game. So really talented. Um, they push the ball really well in transition. They force you into turnovers to score in transition, and they rebound the basketball uh, at a high level. So we got to try to slow them down as much as we can in transition. Uh, we got to try to keep them off the boards um, and not allow them to get easy putbacks or send just send them to the free throw line on the O boards. But those are some of the tasks that we have uh, that we're going to be faced with with this team. Uh, but they're they're a very talented team for sure. Corey Diaz with the USA Today Network. Lindsay, you know, a lot of people this time of year talk about the, you know, on the women's side, there's not many, you know, double digit seeds that upset single digit seeds. Like, do you guys talk about that at all? Or is that just something that you guys sort of just keep outside the periphery and, and just, you know, this team being able to go on the run that it's been on, you know, how do you guys take that and turn it into hopefully a win tomorrow? Yeah, you know, we, we haven't talked a whole lot about our, our num the number that's beside our name in this tournament, right? Um, but we did just go through a tournament where we were a 10 seed and we won four straight days. Our back was against the wall for all four of those games. No one believed that we were going to do what we did other than the people in our locker room. And so we're just trying to have that same mindset, talk about the same things. Uh, game plan the same way we would, uh, but we're throwing the numbers uh, out the window and not talking about that as much. It's just about there's a hoop, uh, there's two teams. It's the same length it's always been. The, the goal is the same height it's always been. Like let's just go out there and play basketball and try to put our best brand of basketball on the national stage. Uh, Scott Rapolay with the Baton Rouge Advocate. Uh, is it, how unusual is it to play LSU in the fact that your your players probably see a lot of them on social media or they may have listened to Fla, uh, Flauger Johnson uh, rap song or seen an ad with one of these girls in it I mean it's not it's not the usual team in terms of you know their notoriety and I mean it doesn't help them score any points or stop you from scoring but it's it's, it's a little unusual right I mean it could be starstruck can you do you have to guard against that uh, yeah, maybe. Um, you know, when we went into our scouting report, our scouting report meeting with the coaching staff, it was the first time that I was like, I don't need personnel because I've seen them enough that I, I know who they all are. Um, and Coach Nick showed me anyway. But I was, you know, that's unique in that situation. Um, but you know. There's going to be some things that we're not used to. We haven't played an NCAA tournament. We haven't played in an arena of this size that's going to have an attendance. Uh, we haven't played against the status of, of these players. And so, you know, I hope in the first couple of minutes we can get our nerves out uh, and then just settle in and, and play basketball. And hopefully all of that other stuff is kind of 
uh, we block it all out and we just play basketball. Um, but yeah, um, it, it's unique for sure. Kim said a couple of uh, her former Baylor managers are on your staff. I guess just mm -hmm. she said, you know, they might have a good insight into her philosophy. I guess <laughs> have you been picking their brains at all? Yeah, so uh, Coach Nick, uh, my, one of my assistants, was a, a manager for her at Baylor, and then my director of operations was also a manager. So um, they're definitely they, – they know – the Kim Mulkey brand, right? But um, they were with her at Baylor, and now she's at LSU, and, you know, teams are different. What they do know is she loves defending. She loves getting the ball inside. They lo she loves rebounding. Those are all the things that I can see from watching their games anyway. Um, so I don't, I don't think there's, like, any insider tips being traded. Uh, but it's, it's cool for them to be able to have a moment where they can see her uh, as well. Um, more of a general kind of current era women's basketball question. Uh, with recent changes in the um, transfer rules, how much um, do you have to spend or how many resources you have to dedicate to just retention, uh, uh, worry about it? Um, has it changed a lot for you? Um, any examples of what goes into that now? And would you like to see any tweaks to the rules? <laughs> Um, you know what, I think Rice is a unique and special place, right? Like pe young ladies go there for basketball, but also for that degree. Um, so to be able to walk away from a degree at Rice, it's, I feel like it's got to be a bad situation for them. Um, and I think a lot of those young ladies want that degree. I have engineers on my team. I have pre-med. I have pre-dentistry. Um, so to walk away from that um is it's a little bit different it's a little bit harder for them to do um i, I think so I, I, I honestly i recruit my players every single day i treat them like family i love on them uh, we treat them fairly we treat them right um, we have a culture that people want to be a part of and so i think that's half the battle um for where i'm at right like i it's I'm not saying no one will ever leave, but I haven't had anyone go into the portal since I've been the head coach uh, at Rice. Um, and so I, I think a lot of that has to do with the degree, though. Um, obviously, LSU, Power Fives, ACC, SEC, they deal with it on a much higher level of transferring. Um, but I, I haven't faced it a whole lot. Uh, I'm not saying it won't. I, I would like there to see there to be some type of limit on how many times players can transfer. I, I have a hard time believing that players should be at four and five schools, um, but that's just me. I don't know that we're teaching these young ladies anything about life if they can just transfer four or five times. I do think there's reasons for transferring, um, and those definitely deserve the opportunity to transfer, um, but four and five times in a career is, is a lot. Uh, I'm assuming this will be the first NCAA tournament game for maybe most of your roster. Just, and I know you've been there as an assistant coach. And just, do you share kind of your experience with them, kind of leading into this, just to kind of, because I feel like it'll be a different atmosphere maybe than what they're used to. Do you yeah. kind of share what you what you've experienced? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, during the season when we were going on our skid, I, I was trying everything to get us back rallied again, right? And saying like this is hard like this is the you know the dog days of the season and yes we've lost some games but like the pain that you're feeling right now is temporary but if we can push through this and we can like cut down nets it's something that you're going to remember for the rest of your life and it is something that's so memorable and enjoyable and it is so worth it so we talked about that a lot um late february going into march um told him about what the ncaa tournament could feel like what it could look like um, and so it's definitely something that I've tried to share my experiences with them as much as possible. Hey there, uh, Brett Martel with AP again, another one of these big picture questions. What about, um, has NIL done anything to make the job less fun for coaches? Or do you hear, even if not you, do you hear grumblings among colleagues about that um, and, you know, yeah. But do you think there are any obvious solutions to you to kind of tweak that? Yeah, I've definitely heard it from a lot of colleagues about how life has changed um, with NIL and what recruiting now looks like and, and trying to find ways to get players to come with money. I think the NIL started out as you come, 
you perform, you play well, and then all this other stuff is going to happen. But it's became more of a like pay for play. Uh, like you come here, we're going to give you this automatically. Um, and you know, some coaches have been able to. So, you know, two of my mentors, Kenny Brooks, Wes Moore, they've been able to adapt to times of it because if you don't change, you're not going to be able to stay relevant uh, and you're not going to be able to probably have the success that you want to have in our day and age. Um, you know, Coach Moore, he struggles with it more. Like, that's not what he wants to be doing. He doesn't want to be thinking about who who's getting this amount of money, who's getting – he wants to think about the X's and O's and, and the wins. And so I do think it's um, – you see more and more coaches getting out. Uh, there was, you know, coach today that retired that I was really shocked by her retirement announcement because I thought she was pretty young in coaching. Uh, but I just think it's changing, it's evolving. Um, coaches are getting worn out um, by the grind of NIL and, and what that all can look like. I don't know that there's a, a way to fix that, though, because um, I think it's hard to monitor as is. Um, and so how do we fix it when it's really hard to monitor? Anybody else? We're good. But as a coach going against a coach who has multiple national championships, is it, do you take any joy in like your game plan and preparation going against a coach that's kind of got accomplishments like that? Yeah, uh, I mean, she's obviously a Hall of Famer coach, trailblazer for the women's game, has done what she did at Baylor to coming here at LSU and doing it that quickly is amazing. So yeah, great coach. Um, I'm excited to be on the si same sideline with her. I'm excited for that opportunity. I'm excited to see how our team can stack up and how our team can compete um, with them. Um, and I, I get it. I, I know it's a tall task, but I'm just excited for the opportunity. Coach, thank you for your time. Again, thank congratulations. You. Welcome to Baton Rouge. We wish you the best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, thank everyone. Thank you very much. That will wrap up our press conference coverage for this Thursday. We will be back tomorrow with you on Friday following the first game, which is Middle Tennessee and Louisville. We'll see you for post game then. Until then, have a great Thursday. See you back in Baton Rouge on Friday.